Let's finish up section 10.2 now by looking at special graphs that occur when we create new graphs from old graphs. So first let's talk about subgraphs because we haven't talked about that yet. If we have a subgraph H of a graph G, it's a graph that can be directed or undirected where all the vertices and edges in the subgraph are contained in the original graph. So we can't add any edges, we can't add any vertices, everything is contained in the original graph. So for instance, using my graph G, a subgraph A, B, D, I might not have C in there and I might have the edge AB and AD and the loop from D to D, but I might not have the edge from D to B. This is considered a subgraph. It is a subgraph because every vertice in graph H is contained in G and every edge in H is contained in G. So that's what it means to be a subgraph. So I can't make up new vertices or edges, but I can choose, I don't have to use all vertices or edges from the original graph. If you have a spanning subgraph, it is a subgraph just like what we just talked about, except that every vertice in the original graph is equal to the vertices in the subgraph. So all I have to do here is add C. Whether or not I add any of the edges doesn't matter, but a spanning subgraph includes all of the original vertices. The most interesting, I think, is a subgraph induced by a subset. So what that means is, I'm going to get rid of this just for clarity. Let's say I want a subgraph induced by the set a, B, D. What that means is I'm only going to use A, B, and D, and I'm only going to use any of the edges from the original graph, which means I'm going to get rid of any graphs that were connected to, or any edges connected to C. So I'm going to get rid of that edge and that edge and that vertex because C is not part of the subset. So that graph is going to look like this. This would be the subgraph induced by the subset W, including A, B, and D. Again, I could do the same thing for say ADC. So if we use only A, D, and C, what would that look like? Well, we would still have A, we would still have D, we would have C, and anything that is B or connected to B would no longer be part of my graph. So now I'm going to have just A to D, D to itself, and D to C. So that's a, an induced subgraph. We can also create a new graph by adding or removing edges. So we're not going to add any vertices. We have the original vertex set, but if say I wanted to get rid of some edge, I can get rid of that edge. My vertex set would be the original vertex set, but the resulting edge set would just be the edge set without that edge. So essentially, again, using that same graph, a, B, C, D. Perhaps the edge I want to get rid of is right here. So notice I'm still going to have all of the same vertices that I started with, and I'm still going to have all of the same edges except for the edge that I chose to get rid of. You can also choose to add an edge. And again, I want to point out to you the notation. So here the edge set would be E, which is the edge set minus the edge that I'm getting rid of, that I'm choosing to get rid of. Um, if I'm adding an edge, I would still have the same vertex set, but the 
a new edge set would be the original edge set with the union of the edge that I'm adding. So let's say I have my original graph, A, B, C, D, and all of the original uh, edges, excuse me, all of the original edges. And then I'm choosing to add an additional edge. So notice I haven't created a new vertex, but I'm just adding a new edge. The last of these, which I think is kind of fun, is an edge contraction. So I'm going to get rid of this one in the middle. An edge contraction occurs when essentially you take two endpoints, you merge them into one, you call it something new, and you see what you have left. So let's say I want to merge B and C. So essentially, I'm still going to have A, I'm still going to have D, um, but B and C we're now going to call F just for fun. So A was originally connected to B. Well, it's now connected to that new endpoint. A was connected to D. D was connected to itself. D was connected to B, which is now F. And D was connected to C, which is now F. So I don't have to draw another edge. This is my contraction where I've contracted B and C into just one point. We've already talked about how you can remove vertices from a graph. And again, we didn't use this notation, but essentially what we're saying is you can in have an induced subgraph by choosing certain vertices to keep in your subgraph or by choosing which ones to get rid of, which is sort of the opposite problem. So for instance, what if I wanted to create the subgraph without D? So again, I would have A, B, and C and I would have all of the edges that originally connected A, B, and C, and I would get rid of anything that was connected to D. So this would be the graph minus uh, vertex D, and this would be what I have left. Up next, we're going to take a look at how to represent graphs in different ways.